Uh, ice booty, so we're working on it. So to bring you up to speed on where we're at. Hold on one second. I got a massive echo and I got to figure out why. All right, so <clears throat> did I get it working correctly? No. Uh, so what we're doing, I'm working on part two right now. That's why you see two boards in front of you. So the way I'm pursuing this is I'm building a whole new board, but this time with quality stuff, right? So I, I bought the kits, but all the capacitors, resistors, everything that I could get from DigiKey, I got from get DigiKey. So we're getting all new stuff in here. Um, in the meantime, I had really interesting conversations with uh, a couple followers who, since my video came out last year, bought the kit themselves, and we've been troubleshooting. So some of what I'm going to accomplish tonight is I have my oscilloscope here just out of view of the camera, and we're going to try to get some readings on this IC because um, one of the guys I'm working with, he wanted to confirm some of his readings. So it's really a long way of saying, no, uh, I didn't get it working yet, um, but I got a good feeling about this one. Because we had some interesting things happen. Um, so over the past year, some of the people that have bought this kit and that have done their, their own assembly on it, we've noticed similarities. They've had pretty much the same failures as I had some actually a little worse um one of one of the guys from reddit who has been a huge help and i'm going to credit him a lot in the second video um he had some transistors actually explode on him um which i've never had <laughs> before um so there was that um some of the capacitors and if you watch i think it was the first live stream i did with this uh, i really complained a lot about the capacitors these are um Chong X, C H O N G X capacitors. Um, they're just really, really, really cheap bottom of the barrel capacitors. And talking to other people who have used these capacitors, not in this kit, but in general, um, they're just bad. Like they're, they're insanely, insanely bad. Um, the value printed on the capacitor is not really close to what it should be. Uh, a lot of times it's not in spec. I have found um, capacitors that were sent in the kit. Um, some of them don't have the stripe on it. So you know how all capacitors, they have that plastic wrapping around it and there's a stripe or something to signify that this is the negative leg of it. Well, they are polarized resistors. Um, some of them don't have that stripe on it. So you don't know uh, what leg is negative, and even more importantly, um, the legs are the same size. So it's incredibly difficult to understand, um, you know, that, do I even have a capacitor incorrectly? <laughs> you know, a video I found on these Chong X uh, capacitors, and I might try to recreate some of it for um, for part two they would hook it up to a power supply and you know let's say it was 10 volts or whatever and they would supply 10 volts to it um, but if you went slightly above or supplied even the rated voltage for a long period of time um, it would fail catastrophically <laughs> um, and then he would take you know a good capacitor a name that you would know and recognize and you know put almost twice the amount of voltage through it and a capacitor would be fine so really, really interesting, uh, some of those results. And I'm going to try to recreate some of those for part two. Hello, Electronic Mess. How are you? Thanks for joining tonight. Um, going to be doing some interesting things here. Let's see if we can turn this so we can see maybe what we're doing. Of course. Oh, Jose, look at you. You got a cool little logo and everything. That's awesome, man. That is really awesome. You know what I'm going to do? Before we even do this, I'm going to I'm gonna subscribe to you right now. Is this the same link you sent me before? Is that the same channel link?
give me one second. Okay, yeah, yeah. Please, please send me a link. That'll make things easier. Um, uh, Jose is um, so electronic mess, right? Another another really great guy. Um, he does a lot with with CRTs, and I hope we're going to see a lot more of his content uh, coming out soon. So, if we manage to get it working, it would be cool to see some modified guitar. So, I don't think that as is this would be, ever be able to use a color tube. Um, now, you know, definitely you could take the board and, and use that probably as a, as a jumping off point. Um, actually, thanks to Jose, we found out that you can buy just the board on AliExpress. If you look up um, ZX 2035, you can buy just that board and mess with it. Um, unfortunately, and I'm sure somebody with better understanding of this I could, could weigh in, but, you know, see your uh, black and white if it's designed to produce black and white on the board level itself it really can't be upgraded to uh to color um sorry i got some other some other stuff going on here uh if you haven't joined one of my live streams before um rarely do i have a full set agenda and rarely do i stay with it um <laughs> so Let's see how this goes. So the first thing we're going to do, um, this is the old board. We're going to power it up with uh, the old tube. Yeah, you probably could get away with that. Um, I forget who it was. Um, maybe Technology Connections, where they showed you had a, a black and white TV, but it, it rotated um, color diffusers in front of it, and it mimicked color. You, you actually might be able to do that with this. Um, that might be something we can uh, take a look at down the road. All right, so let's see if I uh, don't get in any trouble here. Um, I don't need that. We're going to put the monitor here. Unfortunately, there's going to be no... Oh, I could probably move the camera. Let's see if we can get you guys to, to see what's going on here. So on the IC, uh, my Reddit friend specifically wants to see two points. He wants... In 17 and 18, let's go to the messages here. I'm, I'm really watching. I don't want to, you know, let you guys see his number or anything here. Uh, pin 18. Yeah, so 17 and 18. And it starts on 15, 16. Okay, yeah, so there's the two. All right. All right, turn on the bench power supply. Okay, so the tube is on now. Uh, I'm going to try to get, where is, where is my tweaker, because I want to get the screen as full as we can before I start messing around. Um, as always, anytime you're messing inside a CRT and you're using a tweaker, use a plastic insulated tweaker, unlike what I'm doing right now. Now, another thing that he indicated is... W4 would have some issues, and I, I, I agree with him that a lot of these adjustment pots are just very, very poor. Okay. All right, so we got that.
figure out how to make it work. Yeah. So there's um, I'll let this warm up a little bit and we'll, we'll we'll talk a little bit. Most of my streams are just talking and very little working, even though I wanted to stream to get work done. Um, there's been a lot of movement in um, CRT issues in and around uh, you know retro and vintage gaming and everything else. Um, you know, a lot of people are making some really interesting add-ons that they can use on, um, you know, PVMs to BVMs to add different uh, capabilities. Um, I, you know, I do think, sorry, my chair, I, I have one of these mats on the floor, and the chair gets stuck on it, and I got to stand up and look silly. Um, you know, one of the things we're seeing now, there's a lot more interest in CRTs and CRT technology. Um, and, you know, is it difficult to, to make a tube? Yeah, it's extremely difficult to make a tube. Um, but do I think that, you know, it can be done again? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> Anything can be done. Um, it's, it's not going to be cost effective and it would be on an incredibly small scale. Um, but I think it could be done and, and I think that it could be done relatively effectively not cost effective though okay so let's see what we got here for pin 17 and i want to see if it compares to what i gave him last night 15 16 17 So I'm going to take a picture real quick, and then I will show you. A 17. And that is 18. See, that looks better. Okay, and let me try to turn this around without messing too much up. So, oh man. Oh, I got, a, I got something in the background there. So we're doing horizontal. All right, so here you go. You see we have the CRT up, and just like in the video, it, it doesn't it doesn't fill the whole screen, right? Um, top is just a little bow, but that's a convergence thing. I can probably take care of that. Um, but as is, I mean, it works. It's just not, you know, like it should be. So let's take a look here. And so that's 17. See if I can hit the auto button without making you guys go crazy. Yep, so that's 17. And 18. So it's a little, a little different. Yeah, it's a lot different than what I just saw a second ago. So, all right. Well, I mean, I don't know if we actually learned anything from that, but I'll send them, I'll send them those data points, and we can go off from there. That's one of the really great things about you know finding somebody else working on a same or similar project, or even just the community in general, because um, we're able to uh, to bounce some findings off of each other. So, all right, I think we're done with the scope for tonight. Don't want to shock myself on the exposed tubes. All right. Let's get this out of here. We're going to power this off. Like, I don't need the power supply anymore. There we go. Did it want to turn off for a second? All right, what can we get out of the way? Let's get... We 
one day I will have a much more organized and better thought out system here. All right, so let me let me send some of these off to him. Looks good. Yeah, so again, my my waveform for pin 18, other than scale, looks the same. I, I can mess with it to mimic it. But 17 looks very, very off. Now, things he did do, 17, yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Um, he did replace some components, um, and this is all original components that would have came from AliExpress if you ordered it. So I guess that kind of, would that make much of a difference? It's, a, it's an IC, though. I don't know. All right, so let's discharge and get this disassembled. This is one of the things that, um, rightfully so, should make you a little, I don't want to say uncomfortable, but cautious. Um, CRTs are dangerous. They can hurt you. And I think in most cases, it's only a matter of time before you get hurt with a CRT. So, in some way, shape, or form. So, so what we're doing right now is we're going to discharge this to ground. Okay, so that is discharged. Unplug everything else, and I will tap it again. Okay, so take the pins off. And let's see if we can get this off, and then we'll see what we can do with the other board tonight. There we go. All right. Removed. All fingers are in place. Nobody shocked. Wonderful. All right. And another thing I found is the transistors get warm. I think his get immensely warmer than I mine are. Um, last night I measured them after being on for about ten minutes. Ninety eight F. That's not too horrible. Um, it's actually pretty good for some of these. I think his were higher, uh, but I believe, I don't know, it shouldn't matter, but I think he's in Europe too, so I don't, I don't know if it's a 50, 60 hertz difference. Shouldn't be, right? Because it's all, yeah, it's all going to, uh, it's all going to DC. Use this board for base for the So, I mean, you're not wrong, right? Um, the nice thing about this board uh, compared to existing ones um, you could buy the board as is you know um, I do have some decent scans front and back of the board unpopulated that uh, I did I did share those with electronic mess um, and when part two is uh, is uploaded I'll have those files available as well um, yeah, you could, you know, and, you know, one of the things that I've spoken with some other people who are working on this board, whether or not you go and you make it color or, or add anything else, um, the board could be optimized better, you know, um, the traces are very simple, it's a one layer board, um, you know, this could be optimized and it could do a lot better at, you know, flow path, so. Yeah, there's there's always room for improvement with these things. Let's see. Right. 
So I don't want to get, obviously I want to finish this relatively soon, but I don't want to get too, too far because there are still, in my mind, key assembly milestones in this new board that I want to record. Um, and I want to make sure, you know, I get the lighting and everything else right for that so it looks as good as it can be on video. So right now I am going to install V-hold brightness and contrast dials. Um, these are, again, th these are pretty sketchy. Um, the same thing with some of the other pots on here to adjust, um, you know, just everything else in the tube, right, convergence and... You have a lot of the adjustments on here that you would find on a, a much more mature set. Um, but some of the components are suspect. So uh, my Reddit friend said that W4, I think he said that for W4, um, W4 was giving him some issues. That could be redone. Um, just a lot of things in this board can be upgraded. And I didn't, I don't know why I didn't, but in hindsight, I didn't order any of the pots or adjustments. I just kind of bought the um, capacitors, transistors, uh, and a couple other things. So, if I don't get the results, maybe I'll start going through and, and updating some of those. Right, don't mind me, I'm just checking some of the other things, making sure I got everything, everything right. Okay, so, yeah, we'll get, we'll get some of this taken care of tonight. Yeah, it seems like the 5-inch, um, e even here in, in North America, 5-inch CRTs are black and white are pretty, pretty common. Um, you know, I the, the biggest thing I remember is mostly, you know, combination CRT radio units that would have a battery in it that you would take camping or maybe to put in your car or something. Um, you might have some more experience with those down there. But... Uh, it's a good, you know, I think it's a pretty good portable size. You know, this is five and five and a half inch CRT. Um, you know, it's a it's it's a decent. You know, it's a, it's a okay size tube for what it is. You know, um, even when it wouldn't fill the whole screen, I could see it fine. I had my uh, Sega Genesis or Mega Drive for our non North American friends hooked up to it playing Sonic, everything was fine. You know, it, it worked, right? It did what it should do. It just didn't fill the whole screen up. Um, that's a, it's a nice size tube, you know? I mean, obviously, you know, bigger, bigger is better when it comes to these things, but that one worked and it was perfectly fine. Okay, I think this is going to be a uh, slower night on the live stream. We have, uh, actually Jose, you might remember, the other night we had Eric from Eric's Edge in the room. Um, he is actually streaming himself tonight. So, but if I realized that ahead of time, I probably wouldn't have streamed. Um, I think he is, I think he's recapping a Mac. 
let's go take a look, really. Um, Eric's a really good guy. If you're not, yeah, he's recapping. Oh, he's recapping his, uh, his iMac, the lampshade. Good for him. Good luck. I might uh, swing by and say good luck to him on that. Um, but yeah, for both of you, if you're not uh, subscribed to Eric uh, of Eric's Edge, highly, highly recommend it. Um, he's a really great guy, wealth of knowledge, um, and does very, very entertaining live streams. Yes, looks like Eric has a pretty uh, pretty busy room tonight, so that's good. That's good. Now, Jose, I didn't ask you last time, how are you finding a lot of your CRTs? Is it secondhand stores, or are people just selling them down there, like on uh, Facebook Marketplace or other resale sites? Buying online, okay. I think I have, um, so my main, I have a couple, I have a couple CRTs, right? But my main one is um, that Sony KV27 FS100. Uh, I got that one on Facebook Marketplace, it was free. But uh, I found it on Facebook Marketplace. Um, or no, it was like twenty bucks. I don't know. Um, I have, and and you know, I, I think that for many many cases, twenty seven inches is, is is perfect. You know, it's a really good sweet spot. Um, it's across the room right now, but if I was watching something, you know, I'd be able to see everything. It would be fine. Um, I have a thirty six incher that I got for free. Um, that was just literally on the side of the road, right? Um, I would pass it every day coming home from work for a week or so uh, in the rain. I was like, you know what? At some point in time, I just got to take it. And I did. Um, and then I have uh, a couple other ones. I have a small Hitachi over there. Um, that one, another roadside find, right? But, um, oh, that's interesting. Okay. Let's get some of these on. Can you guys see? No, you can't see. Let's move this up. I don't have the camera in the same spot as I normally do. I'm kind of rearranging some things around here. Now, I do not like these adjustment pots on here. I'll show you why in a second. So they have three prongs on the bottom of them. They go in the board and they sit there, but the problem is there's no other support. Some of the uh, more pricier options that I'm talking about, like pennies, more pricier. Um, there's actually a support that'll come down, and there's a third hole there, and that kind of gives it a little more, a little more support. So you know, it is what it is. Again, in a kit like this, you're not going to be too, too picky. 
but you could replace those easily, and we might end up doing it. Because right now, um, assuming this board turns on and everything's fine, uh, I'm really testing out, is it the capacitors, resistors, and transistors? Is it, is it the power side of it that is giving me the issue? Because I really, I really do think it is. Um, so things we can troubleshoot after that, if it doesn't work or if I get similar um, similar results as the other one, then I can go through and start um, upgrading some of these pots and trying some other things to see what we can do to make this less cheap. But we will get to a point where, you know, I'm not going to be, I could, but I'm not really going to be replacing the flyback on it. Um, not going to be replacing the tube. And I'm not going to mess with the board. I really want to prove that those three are decent, you know. So, it's interesting you say that. Um, where are where are the transistors on here? So I'm going to show you guys something. I have my transistor tester. That's an empty bag. Yeah, here we go. Now, I tested this earlier and I tweeted it out and I actually tagged uh, some people who know a lot more about electronics than I do, and it may or may not be an issue, but I think it's an interesting um, interesting data point. So this transistor here, this is the one that comes with the kit. It is a Delta 880-TAC-Y. Uh, there's two of these in there. And if we throw it in the transistor tester, One of the things that I cue in there is that HFE, that's beta, uh, of 123. I'll come back to that in a second when I test the ones I got from DigiKey. Again, similar, Delta 880Ys. So this beta is 173. Oh, did that do it again? Did I do it the same? That's the problem with these. Sometimes it's you get same or similar results. Now 120, 123 for the AliExpress, 173 for the the DigiKey version. Now, so you'll see HFE written as beta, right? And I I think the easy way to explain that, and again, somebody you know who understands electrical engineering way better than me could probably do a better job. But that is the, think of it as the transistor's ability to actually do its job, right? The higher that value, the better off it is. Um, and since I know um, other people have reported that the transistors that come with this have exploded um, under normal loads, and, and it, they were not installed backwards, everything else was correct, because when they put a new transistor in, it worked perfectly, like it's filled up the whole screen. Um, that really makes me think that, you know, these are, I don't want to say fake, um, but their quality is not there. Um, and, and I see this a lot with the uh, resistors as well, because the resistors, and, and we're going to show this in, in part two of the video, I, I recorded it and I got some really good video, where I will get... Um, four transistors of the same value, right? Measure them, they'll be all over the place. Wait, some one of them is way out of spec. Um, some, some transistors don't have all the color bands on it, so I don't know. Um, you have to test them. You don't know what their rating really is. So it's, um, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's interesting with this kit. Um, not really sure what you're going to get sometimes. All right, so this is the contrast. We'll get this one installed. Let's see. 
you put it as a gain or application factor or things like that. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's one of those things. I know we talked about this before, Jose. You know, I'm, when I set out to order parts for this new kit, um, you know, I wanted high quality parts, parts that I would put in an amplifier or a piece of audio equipment. And, you know, I, I wasn't going to go crazy working to buy, you know, high end, high end parts and, you know, throw a lot of money in it. But I wanted to buy, you know, at least mid range, you know, um, components that I would, one, be proud to have in a system that I was building, but more importantly, components that I would put in a system that I was repairing for somebody else and, you know, not worry about it, right? And that's one of the reasons why, for the capacitors, I went with Worth Electronics. Um, they're my go-to brand for capacitors. I know, um, you know, a lot of a lot of audio enthusiasts swear by Worth. Um, some of them hate it, but you know, you get that with any community. Um, and they're red. I mean, that looks really good, right? You know, I, I think that a bunch of red transistors just look really, really slick. So, um, so we'll see, right? But I, I feel pretty confident that at least the power side of what's going on here, um, you know, everything's working as it should. Uh, okay, so we're not going to put the transistors in yet because I do have to record those. Oh, excuse me. It's been a pretty long day. Uh, I don't want to do that yet because that's going to block C17. I also don't want to get myself in an artificial roadblock. I don't want to... Maybe this will just happen. And of course, all the pins are bent, so nothing wants to line up correctly. Um, that's just kind of, kind of how this kit goes. Yeah, you know, some of the components that you get on it, they're, they kind of remind me as if like you, you know, desoldered components from something else, and you had them, and all the legs were bent, and you went to use it from that. Type. That's kind of what it feels like, you know. All right, I'll get the tuner installed correctly. Oh, that's interesting. Is that to ground? So we have uh, two points here. Yeah, I think those just go on the ground. It looks like we were we bridged, but in this case, it's okay. We're all on the ground, so. All right. 
slowly we are getting there. I would think if I don't have any uh, too many headaches or any issues, I actually might be able to power this board on by the weekend. Um, I do want to make sure that you know I get the the video I need for the parts that I want to install. Um, and we don't have any issues because really the whole point of this is I want to get part two done. So. Um, <clears throat> I want to make sure I have the video I need, so that way when you watch it, it kind of makes sense. All right, so we'll start some of the connections on the tube. I really don't mind glossing over this too much in the video because the first one is like 30 minutes. Um, it's a lot. Turned out to be a lot longer than I wanted. Right, Tom? Don't they look great? Tell you what, if you want a project to pop, you get some worth caps and it sticks out. Um, I had uh, my Osborne. So Tom saw my Osborne when he was up here, uh, but he didn't see the inside of it. And I eventually I'm going to have a video on that. But I recapped the CRT of that Osborne. And uh, they're all worth electronic caps. And um, do I have a picture? I might have a picture. Um, they look so good. So good. Um, and, you know, and in all honesty, uh, an Osborne stripped down um, just looks really, really cool. So let's go through, go through the Instagram here. I know I have it somewhere. I thought I did. Maybe I don't. Eh, it might be on Twitter. I'm not going to go dig it. But it looks really good. Um, I mean, the Osborne itself just looks awesome. So, But yeah. Okay, so we're, so we're going to get all the wires, or some of them, connected on. What I'm going to do, because... Uh, the instructions as far as, you know, <laughs> the order the wires go uh, is incredibly vague, and um, they're just not very good. And they're all in Chinese, too, so that doesn't help me either. Uh, but what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy what I did on the working one, because I know that that, that wire way works. Let's do this first. So this is going to be the plug, so right on the yoke. And there's a ground. Where'd my ground wire go? I noticed in this kit a lot of, some things were missing. In the first one, some things were missing too. So I'm actually missing uh, a ground wire. That's not that big of a deal. I can just throw one on there. But that's a that's a warning. If you do, it's not that I would recommend it, but if you do buy this, um, you're probably gonna miss parts. <laughs> I'd take the shortcut and use the already finished one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I uh, I wouldn't blame you. All right. Well, we need we need this guy. You guys, there we go. I want to make sure you guys can see something, uh, but I also want to make sure I don't knock anything off the desk here. Now, Tom, have you? looked into streaming some of your 3D printing on Maker Deck. That's another uh, Chris Perillo channel, but it's all on Twitch. I can send you 
some information on that if you want. Um, really, really cool community. Okay. So for everybody else, uh, Maker Deck is um, it's a Twitch tan channel um, that a gentleman named Chris Perillo started. Um, Chris had a long history in the tech community. Um, he started uh, a Walker Gnome, uh, Gnome Decks. These were things in the 90s, at least here in North America. Um, tech conferences, right? And Chris is a big software guy, but he's gotten a lot into 3D printing, right? That's his new hobby. If you watch him on Twitch, he's always printing something. So what he did is he created Maker Deck. It's a Twitch channel and it's a community, basically. I mean, there's a Discord for it. Uh, and the idea is it's just a bunch of people 3D printing. So if you if you went to Twitch right now, and went to Maker Deck. Um, you know, you're gonna see uh, a bunch of people 3D printing things, and all it is is just a camera on their printer, and it says, you know, their name, their handle, um, and what they're printing. But, and that's cool, right? But the important thing is the back end, the community behind it, um, having the help and support. Um, you know, sometimes I'll just have Maker Deck on in the background because it, it's it's cool. It's cool to see what people are making um, and the you know, to come back and see the progress that was done over time. Um, but the nice thing about it is people will ask questions, right? Hey, my printer's doing this, or, you know, I have layer issues, or, you know, insert whatever, whatever issue somebody having with their 3D printer, um, and you'll get an answer, you know? And it's a lot friendlier, in my opinion, than, like, the 3D printing reddit um because some of those some people are kind of high and mighty on their horse and oh you didn't calibrate your z-axis and they just make you feel bad it's just not a good time for anybody uh but maker deck's a really good community um chris is even on his um other streaming channel uh he's really really big into you know just making sure everybody's civil and everything right So, yeah, Tom, I would um, really recommend you check it out, man. It'd be, I think, definitely up your alley. And if you already have the camera there, why not, right? Um, plus, you know, if, if you leave, you know, if you got to walk away or something, then, you know, you get even more reason just to watch your printer and make sure everything's fine on it. Um, all right. Okay. Once I get all of these harnesses fixed, one thing I really got to figure out an elegant solution for is how the CRT is held into the case. Um, one of the posts broke off in shipping um I'm not, I'm not even gonna worry about complaining because i'll never get a response but um the tube's fine so i just want to make sure we support it a little better all right let's make sure i didn't bridge those meter meter where's my meter there she is All right, so let's bring out. You guys kind of see what I'm doing here. Okay, that's good. Okay, good. And that one goes there. Great. Nothing is bridged. 
So I thought about that, right? And I actually might end up doing that. Um, I have the I have the screw somewhere, and the post broke in half, right? So the screw is on the top. Um, what I might do is super glue and um, baking soda. That's worked very very well for me, um, because you know the baking soda reacts quickly with the super glue, and it forms a really strong bond, and you can actually build up decent gaps. By just adding a little bit of baking soda super glue back and forth um, one of my one of my drones uh, it's a unique typhoon h most of it <laughs> so I, I got it for free um, it was a crash drone um, somebody just didn't want to put the time or effort into rebuilding it and um, yeah most of most of it is baking soda and super glue let's be honest uh, but it flies you know flies just fine. All right, so these are for our signal. And let's get these taken care of. Again, I'm just going to follow what I did on the other two, but the good news is um, if it's backwards, then the, the screen will just be flipped. So it's pretty obvious if you don't do it right. And there should be enough to solder on here. I can just use what's there. Yeah, yeah, you can always use throw some epoxy on there and make a world of a difference. You know, but I also uh, just might use the three. I mean, there's four posts on here. Do I really need four posts? Probably not. Um, it's not like this guy's going anywhere. But if I don't do it. It'll get dropped or something, or bumped and break, and then I'll regret it. So we'll probably, probably take care of it somehow. All right, come on. I guarantee that's lead solder. Guarantee it. it smells like it. <clears throat> We'll put a little more on just to make sure we're good. I did early, early on in the channel, I did a video on a um, a radio that I got. Uh, it was a Soviet radio from the Soviet Union. It was one of those. So then. Um, you didn't have antenna, right? It wasn't FM or AM broadcast. It was, you plug it in. And uh, by plugging it into the wall, not only did it power the radio, but it also gave it its signal. So every apartment would have its own radio socket on it. And I did a video on it. It did very poorly because it's just a really, really niche project, right? Um, but the solder on that smelled horrible. Not only was it like pure lead solder, it was very low quality, pure lead solder. Um, yeah, you know, you say that, Tom, but I, you know, um, when and if I ever get to any of uh, the VCFs, uh, I'll probably be toting this guy along just to show people, um, especially the first one, because I, I owe, I owe the growth of the channel to that, to that monitor. Is this? I think this is what they want me to use the ground. Um, 
I mean, don't get me wrong, it works, but it's just really, really chintzy. Um, what is this? Yeah, we'll use it. We gotta cut it off, though. Yeah, so I, I again, I, I, we talked before, right? Uh, I'm not going to be able to go to VCF East this year. Um, but I, I thought, and, and I kind of feel weird about it because I don't think I... I don't think I'm there yet, but I thought about getting a table uh, if I do go, just so I can kind of display these things. Um, and there's a couple other things like that. Columbia Columbia Data Products, you don't see a lot of those. Um, is Data General one, you know, maybe do that. Um, so, we'll see. Yeah, who knows. Oh, top 5,100. You got two of them. Nice. Yeah, so Atari, I mean, I, I like working on Ataris, man. They're, you know, I think they're well-thought-out systems for how dumb some of them are, right? Not the designs, but the systems themselves, right? They're, they're, they're pretty simple machines. Um, I don't know if you saw my video, Tom, on the 2600 I worked on. Um, again, it was just like that, right? It was... Um, yeah, no, please, please subscribe to Tom. He, he does some really good stuff. Um, and Jose, when you send me your link, um, I'm going to I'm gonna tweet it out because I, I, I know a lot of people I follow would love the work that, that you're working on. And, and, and Tom, go, go subscribe to Jose. Everybody just subscribe to each other. Um, but anyway, Tom, if you watched my video on my 2600 that, that I restored, I got it as non-working. And um, it was weird, right? You know, uh, power was good. You know, I had known power supply that worked. Known carts, I tested another 2600. Um, and yeah, yeah, don't subscribe to that one. Subscribe to Real Chef underscore Tom. Just, yeah, do that. <laughs> um, but it turned out somebody harvested the timing crystal from that 2600, and that's why it didn't work. Um, not sure why you would do yeah the telegames one right yeah so you know i don't understand why somebody would one harvest any parts from a telegames machine but um then to get that timing crystal it's really weird right so yeah i'm, I'm re really interested to see how those <clears throat> those 5200s work out for you Th those were cool man um i just you know, I just have two 2600s. Um, I would like to get more into Atari, but, I mean, that could be just a, a rabbit hole, right? Yeah, I remember, I think it was at a Kmart. <laughs> that kind of shows when this was. Um, but there was, oh, man, they had a Jaguar, Atari Jaguar. Um, and it was, Kmart was closing. Um, and I remember looking at it thinking, why would anybody want a Jaguar, right? And now it's like, oh, man, what could I, I'd love to get my hands on a Jaguar, right? Um, but yeah, to, you know, I, I don't have a 5200, um, I don't have a 78, 7800. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of really interesting, interesting Atari systems. I, I want to try to get, um, an 800, the, the computer one. I'd really like to do some work with that. So I think that's I think that's a really fascinating machine. All right, so somewhere there should be yep there it is. Well, we can get the rest of this. So yeah, so Tom, that um, electronic mess, I don't know if you remember the other night when you were in here, uh, Jose, that that's Jose. Jose is electronic mess. Um, so he'll be doing some cool CRT videos, hopefully. Um, you know, I, um, well, hey, so Jose, I'll, I'll let you know. Um, when I, this, this channel, Retro Tech or Die, is 
a year older than my earliest video. So, you know, I came up with the name, I came up with the logo, I built a channel, I built a Twitter uh, and an Instagram, and it just sat, right? It was really mostly to to keep the name because, um, you know, there's so many people signing up to have Retro Tucker die. Um, but where I'm going with this is, you know, it's no rush, man, right? Um, you, you got the channel, that's good, right? Um, you got a catchy logo. I, I like it. Um, so you know now, uh, I didn't I didn't start advertising my channel until I think I had two or three videos up, and, and you know videos that I'd be like really really proud of, right? Um, you know I opened up with uh, the Hudson Soft System Rack for the Famicom. Um, that did pretty pretty good for a first video, I think. So yeah, man, take take your time, make sure you do it right, make sure you're happy with it, you know. Um, I see a lot of people trying to chase numbers, or oh, I gotta get, I get it, get, gotta get monetized. You know, just, just make sure you're happy, man. Make make a product that you you yourself are happy with. Uh, cool, man. That's awesome. That's that's really good. Really excited for you. Um, so I actually believe it or not, Tom, my I don't have any mods on my Atari. Uh, it's it's RF. And I, I'm just gonna keep it that way. I, I don't think I'll. I don't think I'll change it. Um, it I primarily use it with a, a 13 inch. Yeah, it's either yeah, it's just like a 13 inch um, Hitachi, and it 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 looks fine, you know. Um, it also goes over. Uh, eventually, I, I want to do a video on um, kind of how I do my video routing. Uh, I have an Extron switcher and a couple other switchers, but um, it looks great on the 13 inch. It looks great on the 27. Uh, I do have uh, a modern. It's five years old, but you know a modern, you know, flat screen, right? Flat panel TV, and it looks decent on there. Um, the nice thing about, I mean, I'm I'm kind of a pure purist when it comes to stuff like that, right? There are exceptions, which we'll talk about in a section, but um, the nice thing about having an S video or an AV modded Atari is it just makes it easier to to hook things up to the TV. Because one thing I found out when I was younger, uh, when I was like a little boy, um, you know, there's a limitations to hooking RF up, right? There was a time where I had the Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and a Genesis all hooked RF daisy chained one after another, right? Cause I don't know. I thought, well, why wouldn't it work, right? You know, um, but you just you just can't do that, right? The, the signal's just not there. Um, so it's it's nice to have S video or AV. You can put it in the switch, and it just makes life easier using the systems. Um, but I just I just have a hard time not modding it, right? I got, I got no issue with that. But it's if 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 I have to do anything that could cut into the case, uh, and the case isn't already damaged, or you know anything that would destroy the originality of it, um, I really try not to, right? But that doesn't mean I'm against it, right? If somebody wanted a mod, I would I would be more than happy to do it for them. Um, so really, I, my stuff I want to keep the original, you know. Um, the exceptions with that, though, um, I do have one of the, um, Whamadyne, you know, component cables for the Super Nintendo, uh, just because, you know, the Super Nintendo put out, uh, SCART, right? So, you know, that's not a modification, that's just a cable, cable transfer. Um, but yeah, everything else, right? I mean... My NES, that's AV, but I also use RF out for that little 13-inch guy. Yeah, nothing else. Yeah, none of those things are modded. Yeah, you see that that's nice, right? There's a lot of um, there's a lot of mods, especially for the Commodore, that are reversible to an extent. You know, you can plug and play those, right? Um, 
yeah, as you know, Super Nintendo, right? S video looks really good, right? Um, I grew up Super Nintendo, either RF or AV. Um, S video looks great. Um, I got two Nintendo S video, one official, like an official S video cable from Nintendo, and the other one is, um, uh, I don't know, insert random 90s cable maker company here, right? Um, yeah. I think S video looks really good. You can go higher, right? I, I got higher on mine, but S video looks great. Um, yeah, the NES is AV. Actually, you know what? No, I, I take that back. My Famicom has an AV mod, but it came with it. Um, so yeah, no, I take that back. I, I kind of lied. The Famicom has has the AV mod. It's the it's the original AV, or it's the original Famicom. Um, but what they did, and the reason I'm keeping it, is they went through, um, there's a bushing, so on the back of the Famicom, there's two little bushings, and that's where the controller ports come out of, so the controllers are hardwired. Um, they just took one of those bushings out, conveniently left it in the Famicom, so it's not gone, um, but they just had the AV cable go out of there, so it's fine, uh, and it w didn't, it's not destructive to the RF modulator, so you can still use RF on it. So um, that's the only exception. The only exception. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. You know, I've I've had, you know, units whether it's a a Famicom or Atari for other people that, you know, we would mod or yeah, if I get something and the case is just too far gone or whatever, yeah, I'll have no issue doing it. But I would I try to try to keep things for the most part as original as I can but sometimes sometimes you just can't um, not everything can be saved and not everything can be original you know really I don't I'm gonna look this up Tom I don't think I've actually ever seen the back of a 5200. Never actually held a fifty two hundred. I'll look it up as soon as I answer this message. You know, it's kind of like, um, the Saturn. Um, on the back of the Saturn, there's an access port. Uh, one, it's really cool because when you open that door, it allows you to change the clock battery, which is great, and they forgot about that when the Sega came out. Um, but it also had an expansion slot for uh, video CD or VCDs, which is real big in Japan. But I see a lot of talk on some of the Saturn forums that they're trying to use that port uh, for, you know, RGB out, for other things, so it would just be a plug-and-play solution, because the door's there already, um, you don't have to worry about it. So, Tom, are you talking about, are you talking about, the like, the, the door on top, like, the flip one, the storage door, is there actually something on the back of the unit? Because I see, I see a bunch of, oh, wait, is this it? Oh, okay. I think I think I see what you're talking. What is that? What do they plan on doing with that? Yeah, I mean, all the like I said, I, I've never really messed with a fifty-two hundred. So everything I see is just from the top, right? It's just this big black slate. But um, the back of it's interesting. Interesting, yeah. Huh. I wonder if they wanted to try to turn that into almost like a computer, right? You know, put the edge connector on there and have it do some sort of basic, and you'd be good to go. That's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder if you can poke around. I'm sure there's a pinout of that edge connector. I wonder if there's something you can do with that. Via the video, or I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah, it's, I mean that's one of the really neat things about Atari, man. They did some, they did some weird 
interesting, but some, some pretty weird things in their design. Right. Well, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, yeah, because it is kind of just an 800, right? So, you know, realistically, you probably could plug something else in there and have essentially an Atari 800. Um, yeah, it's... It's an interesting time when you think about it because a lot of, well, even with the Commodores too, right? Um, you know, at that time, a lot of people just had the TV and you would timeshare because why would you buy another monitor solely for a computer? Um, Famicom had that in Japan. So you'd get the original Famicom, you would get a basic cart uh, and a keyboard. And it would, you know, it's family, family computer. That's what it stands for. Um, and it would turn it into a basic machine. Uh, and, you know, you had a Nintendo version of basic and you can go there and take everything out, right? Um, so, yeah, that's, that's interesting, right? I think that's something a lot of people forget about that, you know, there was a time where people just had one TV and you wouldn't buy something else. So you'd buy peripherals and put into it. Um, and there was... There was a news article that I was trying to find for one of my videos, and I can't. And it was probably from, I want to say it was from a Canadian Canadian news station, and they were talking about Ataris and Calicos, and it was really right before the big video game cast, video game crash. Um, and there was a lot of concern over, actually no, it was for the Sears video. I mentioned the Sears Telegame video. Because there was a lot of concern over plugging this device into your home TV, which at that time, you know, was probably one of the most expensive things that the household would have, um, and it was, it was the center of the living room, right? It was a conversation piece. Um, so, and that kind of really explained why Sears teamed up with Atari, and it was the Sears Telegames. Um, because when you think about it, at least in, you know, in North America, up until the mid-90s, you know, Sears was really the, you know, the Amazon of the world. So if Sears said you could do something or Sears said this was the, the way to do it, people believed it. And, and that gave a lot more comfort of hooking this device up to your TV, whereas at the time nobody knew the name Atari. So it gave it a little more legitimacy. Uh, but this news article I was looking for, uh, people were very, very concerned that hooking an Atari up to your TV would damage it. And they weren't talking about burn-in. Um, they were just talking about it like it would just break it, right? Uh, but it was new, right? Nobody knew any better. I'm trying to decide where to draw my TV. TV set for AV and play. Ugh. So, you know, Jose, that, that's one of the things, like, if you without seeing it right but if you can get some sort of maybe like a rubber grommet or or something that would make it look like it should be there <laughs> it might make it better um but that can be difficult that can be really difficult um i've used they don't look that great but in the past i've used them um waterproof bushings for like outdoor electrical connections you can get them pretty small right um, and they would screw in, so you would just drill it, um, maybe tap the hole if you wanted to, but you could screw it in, put a, put something on the other side that would look semi-decent, but I think that that might be, honestly, probably too big. <laughs> probably too big for that set. You just might have wires flopping out. Uh, Alright, so we have both well, let's tighten this up a little bit but we got both monitor or both tubes rather all hooked up you missed it tom we powered on the old one earlier uh maybe tomorrow i'll do a power on test with this new tube or newer tube i think these are the same date code 11 5 13 2000 oh so these are our a month and 10 days apart, both from 2011. Interesting. Very interesting. All right. 
Let's make sure we don't smash these tubes. Don't smash the tubes, but smash that like button. Oh, okay. So, like I was telling him earlier, Tom, um, I don't want to get too far ahead on this because I still, I still need to record some video uh, of assembly on this. go out a little bit there we go but we did make did make some progress tonight so yeah I do so I have to fly back right so right there and obviously that'll go there um, I have two transistors one here with this really really cheap heat sink so fly back transistor uh, there's another transistor here. Uh, I have, I think, there's a couple diodes. And then three resistors. The resistors I want to wait on because those I want to I do a video on and show the difference between the resist, like the values that came with the kit and then the new ones and then kind of talk a little bit about tolerances on it. Um, but yeah, and I mean, I, I could put the fly back in, right? But that, then it just, it's going to make the rest of the board a little awkward to work on because it's a decent amount of weight on this. Um, but yeah, other than that, what I should do is clean the bottom of this board a little bit. Uh, Contact cleaner. Where's my rubbing alcohol at? I am going to be right back. Go to my shelf over there and I'm going to get the rubbing alcohol. One moment, please. All right, back and plugged it. I need to get a, a wireless setup. Got too many wires going through here. Yeah, so we'll kind of clean this off and then uh, just check a little bit, make sure contacts are good. I'm not getting anything. I don't have anything to ground or anything else. Let's check. Oh, I got perfect. So I just want to give a shout out. They're not in the room, but Angel Wolf on Twitter. Um, this guy's awesome, man. He, he likes and, and reshares all of my stuff. Um, that's huge. That means a lot, but really, really appreciate it. Um, I don't think Angel Wolf's in here, but if you are, thank you. Little, little things like that go a long way and it, it definitely, definitely means a lot. So. So I don't, I don't think he has a channel. He's on Twitter. Um, let me just double check. Because I know every once in a while I look at his profile. He has a Mastodon. Um, but yeah, on yeah, I don't see anything. If he, if he has a YouTube, I feel really left out. Um, I feel really bad. Because I haven't. <laughs> But yeah, re really, really great. I really appreciate what, uh, you know, trending out. Yeah, so Angel Wolf 71885. Thank you. You know, and it's one of those things, right? I just, um, I broke a, a thousand subscribers on YouTube, and that's cool, right? Um, fun fact, my watch hours are going down. Um, but 
that's fine. I, I wasn't I, I wasn't gonna get monetized anyway. Um, at least not now. But little things like that, it means a lot. It really does. Um, and I, I try to I try to reshare a lot when I see things. You know, if Tom does something, I'll I'll reshare it. Um, that's how things grow, right? And and you too, Jose, right? You know, once we get when you send me your your channel, um, you know, I'll, I'll tweet that out, and we'll start getting some content. We'll make sure we share that out because, especially in the the retro community like this, and even the CRT, right? Um, a lot of people are gonna like what what you're doing. And I already found a bad solder joint. Where is it? Right. Whoop. Right there. That's really bad to see, but it's there. So we're gonna fix it. And that's why we do this, right? That's why we look at our boards. Um I wanna get I wanna get a good microscope. Um Brackus Creations reviewed one. Um it was just a digital camera with the screen, but he really liked it. Um and in my mind, I really wanted to get uh, uh, an optical one, right? Like a two-eye optical one, but the prices in those are just insane. But at least having something that I can get two or three or four X zoom and be able to see things a little better would make this easier. Yeah, yeah, you know, like I said, you know, well, I'll I'll wait till you have some stuff, and you know, you got my email. Um, you know, we we can talk back and forth when when you're ready to. To hit the button on it, let me know, and and we'll I'll share it in my communities and stuff. But, um, yeah, like I said, I I sat for a while. Um, a lot of my videos, I think the first three, I had uh, unlisted for a long time. You know, almost a year. Uh, and my thought was, I wanted to be able to release the first one and then have almost a regularly scheduled release date at least for the first couple months right um and let's take a look i don't think i still have any of that but yeah i wanted to make sure that you know i had good content and i had at least three or four videos I'm not saying you got to have three or four ready but at least three or four videos that you know i can release on kind of a schedule I didn't keep to the schedule, but I wanted to make sure that my first time out there on YouTube, I had some content and a little bit of a backlog. But yeah, it started with going through, going through all my stuff right now. So right now, I've been doing this for three years. I have 110 videos and shorts posted. And let's take a look here. I want to make sure I want to make sure I'm remembering right. Yeah, I think it was my first three videos. The Hudson Sox System Rack, which I, I really enjoyed that one. Nixie Tube Multimeter and Cleaning a Sega Saturn. Those are the first three videos I did. Um, and I wanted to I wanted to make sure I, I had something that I could, you know, repeat and retain remain the quality right. Um and something else I did too, and it was cool. Um, and honestly, Tom, I, you know, you might even want to look into this too. You know, there's a couple subreddits just of YouTubers, right? And it's nice to be able to post a video on there and sometimes get some harsh feedback. But, you know, you would post it, upload the video unlisted. And that way, you know, people only people with the link can see it. And then I would share it in some of the Reddit channels just to kind of get an idea. Um, you know, Maybe people would like it, maybe they wouldn't, maybe I get an idea, I take the video down, re edit it, upload it, um, you know, mess around with it, right? Um, yeah, so I, you know, I think projects with some of those small CRTs would be great. Um, tube amplifiers, like, dude, people, I, I love that, right? People love that. Um, but it's, it's, it's one of those things that the, the biggest thing I could tell you, make sure. Whatever you're doing, man, make sure you love it. Make sure you enjoy it. Because um, people, they'll pick up on that, right? And that's something I learned from my PlayStation 3 video. 
so two years ago, uh, I did a video where it was uh, a PlayStation 3 I picked up from Electronic Waste. It didn't work. I was working on it, and I had to replace some cap capacitors and some other things. And it got to the point where the video was just getting too long and it was getting too time consuming. So I, I said, mistake number one, um, I said in the video, hey, I'm going to do a part two on this and we'll follow up later. Um, and then over two years later, um, I finally did part two on it. Um, and a lot of one of it is if you watch that PlayStation 3 video, if you haven't watched it, um, I'll take the watch hours. But um, part of the issue was I lost a lot of video. Um, I, I didn't back things up. I lost video and uh, I wasn't going to go back and record it. But the biggest thing was I just I, I didn't care. Um, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not interested in PlayStation 3. So I didn't have a lot of motivation to do the video in the first place. Um, you know, it came out early on, right? So in my mind was, hey, you know, let's. I want to be a YouTuber. I want people to subscribe and like what I do. So I'm just going to make videos on things. But I made a video on a system that I had very little interest in. And I really didn't have the motivation to, to do it, you know? So, um do, do videos on things you like because people are going to know, one, they're going to be able to tell you're into it, right? Um, and two, that's just going to be motivation for you to take care of it. Um, so since then, I, uh, I, I've i gotten more serious. I have um, the official uh, Retro Tech or Die backup hard drive here. So everything, I got three copies. It goes on the official backup hard drive. It stays on my laptop, at least while I'm working on it. Um, but I'll, I'll keep some other stuff there. And then I also have a, um, really it's kind of a NAS, but it's a, it, it's a home server. Um, and then everything gets backed up on there. So, you know, at least two, but in a lot of cases, three places. And I'm probably going to get into the habit of um, burning some of it to either uh, DVDs or something just so there's another another way because when it comes to backup two is one and one is none and I found that and you know I didn't get that video out for a long time so it's all it's all part of it huh live and learn man so I think the good thing is the rest of this board looks pretty good. Um, I, don't, I don't see anything that's bridged. Probably some areas could be cleaned up a little better, but electrically, I think it looks pretty good. So yeah, really just uh, got fly by, ah, fly back and a couple other smaller components, and uh, we might be ready to light that off soon. Oh, yes, yeah. I mean, 4K is um, it's ridiculous how much that is, right? Uh, space wise. You know, when I when I first started, do I have it? Yeah. My first couple videos were were done with this Sony Handycam. Um, little HD model, 9.2 yeah, megapixel. It's HD, right? I think it's like 1024 by 768, if that. Um, and this was... It got the job done, but you can tell if you, if you look at my first couple videos, um, you can tell that it was this. Um, <coughs> and then um, I had this brilliant idea. I'm going to start recording on my phone. Um, then a lot of them were done on my iPhone 6, which actually this is my iPhone 6. Uh, and now pretty much everything's done on my 11. So that gets me 
4K. Um, I still do a lot of the close-up shots. So if, if you're if you're looking at one of my videos and you see a, a shot kind of coming this way, right? So top down is nine times out of ten uh, the iPhone 11 in 4K. And if it's coming from the left hand of the desk, looking right, that's usually the iPhone 6 on, on a smaller tripod. And for it gets really nice component shots. So if I'm doing my action shots where I'm soldering, it's usually on the iPhone 6, uh, and that comes out pretty good. Uh, a lot of it I process through a program called Handbrake, uh, mostly because um, the way the iPhone 11 handles, it's all in an Apple format, uh, Apple MOV format, and um, at that HD or at that 4K quality, um, Adobe Premiere has issues with it. it. It'll edit it and it'll go, but it gets very choppy. So I process everything through Handbrake, and then it goes to Premiere Pro, and then I can then I can upload it from there. But uh, I do because of space constriction. This is where I'm kind of getting with it uh, because of how um, big those raw 4K files are. Once they get processed through Handbrake, and it changes it to a mp4 or whatever it is i don't even pay attention right whatever it does it does um i delete the original recording the original 4k dot mov recordings it hasn't bit me yet um it probably will but yeah the file size of some of these are just crazy especially with 4k man i couldn't imagine that you know, and there, there are YouTubers that use, you know, like cinema grade stuff. Um, I couldn't imagine their backup solutions with that. You know, the Pixel 5's got a good camera on it. it it's really, um, when you think about it, it's amazing how good video quality we have for a lot of things that we carry around in our pocket every day. You know, um, it, it's to the point now where I think as friends and family members upgrade their phones i might um i just might acquire them you know um because it's nice to have backups you know if, if i had I, I always thought if i had another iphone 6 or better i would have it a more permanent mounted streaming gig and i should probably be streaming on another channel right now uh, uh simultaneously um but yeah i mean it's just really great and the thing is you know you can get uh an iphone 6 or 7 second hand at a pretty decent price um if you just want to use it for for video you know i mean the 6 it's uh you know i'm running obs locally on it and then it goes over to the laptop on obs and you can have a pretty decent streaming rig with equipment you have already You know, it's been um, it's been a while since I used a GoPro, man. Um, but I mean, things a lot, of, especially your recent videos, Tom. The quality looks really good on it, really, really good. I think one thing that an upgrade I want to do because this this setup here, this wasn't intended to be my uh, filming or streaming area. It just kind of worked that way. Um, I need to get a better overhead area, right? I got three LED lights, two on a tripod. I got one here, which is kind of dangling. It's actually leaning on this monitor. Um, it falls over sometimes. And then the six is on a tripod that's straddling another. So I have this desk. Then there's a small desk here that it sits on. And then it's actually taped and jammed under my Osborne. And that's the only thing keeping the camera from falling down right now. Um, so, yeah. But so, hey, Jose, so one thing I will, one thing I will say, right, um, you know, don't, 
get, get whatever camera you need, right? Get, get what works for you, right? But the best thing you can do, man, um, and this is something I still struggle with, um, <clears throat> get a good microphone. Get a good way to capture your audio because a lot of people will watch something in less than 4K, you know, um, 1080, 720, whatever it is, if the audio is good. And think about it yourself, right? Um, you probably watch a lot of things that the video quality isn't top notch, but the audio is good. Uh, and think of how many videos that you turn away because the audio is bad. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter how the visuals are, right? Um, the, the biggest thing for you, for anybody as a consumer of, of media, is how does this sound, right? So, uh, but I mean, you, you, I mean, I, you, I was just going to say that, man. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you do audio, right? So you probably have way better, <laughs> way better audio equipment and way better acoustic knowledge than a lot of people. Um, but yeah, I'll, as somebody said, yeah, you're good. You're good, man. Um, you know, I got this, uh, this knockoff lapel mic here. Um, that's something I need to, I, I do need to do some upgrades on that. Um, yeah, no, that's good. Yeah. That's, that's the biggest thing. I mean, audio, audio will really, really make or break. And there's been a lot of times where I have redone videos, at least the voiceover, um, because the audio just came out, came out bad, you know, um, and it destroys it. It destroys the video. You can have a really awesome video, um, good angles, good lighting, everything. But if the audio is not there, yeah, man, you're done. Um, yeah, I, so I, I, I like these lapel mics. Um, I used to, I, mean, I have a background in like uh, news production, you know, night, nightly news and stuff. So we, I would always work on our lapel mics. I'm comfortable with them. This was a kit it came with two uh, and a whole bunch of extensions and Y adapters and all kinds of stuff, right? It, uh, it's by Power Device. Um, never really heard of that, but the price was right. Um, and yeah, I got, I got two lapel mics in it and like I said, a bunch of cables. I only ever used one mic, but it's there if, if I ever had a, somebody else I needed to talk to. Um, and honestly, the quality is pretty good, you know. Um, I, I think for, I mean, that kit for two mics, it was like 25 bucks. So I really can't complain. I really got my money out of it. Um, but it, it, it's great, right? And then I got another adapter. Of course, an Apple adapter, so I can plug it into my iPhone um, when I record that way. But hey, it works. It's it's great. I I can't I I can't complain about it. Uh, I think that it's you can tell right when you when you look back at my earlier videos, you can tell the moment I switched over to a lapel mic and really took my audio seriously. Um, yeah, yeah, Tanya, we'll do it when we do retro right day. Um, but yeah, that, that makes a difference. Um, yeah, right now, yeah, no, mine don't go through a mixer or anything. I would like to, um, you know, I think if I had, like in the perfect world, if I, if I really got into streaming, right, if I really took it seriously, right, um, it would go into a mixer and I'd also have a video switcher. I'd probably have three or four cameras. And I'd have I'd be able to live switch the video on them, um, but this works right. This works fine. Um, actually, Jose, one thing that you might be interested in, um, I did a I did a teaser video a while ago. Let me find it um, because unfortunately the audio board is still at my parents, like twelve hours away. It's in their attic. Um, I <laughs> really want to do some work on it. But I did. I uh, find I'll put a I'll put a link in the chat. Um, it's an RCA BC7B audio board. Uh, it's from the 70s. It was RCA's first or second transistor audio board. Um, you could still get well difficult now, but you could 
interchange some of the components to be too based. But this board, um, the particular one, yeah, RC, oh, it's a BC7A, uh, the same thing. Let me get the, let me get the link here, drop it in the chat for you. Um, this audio board, this exact audio board, was the first audio board I ever used. It was the audio board I was trained on. Um, it's not, it, it, it's, it's a quick seven minute video, and I, I filmed it in my parents' attic. Um, <laughs> but I wanted, I wanted to talk about the board. Um, eventually, I want to bring that thing here, right? I want to bring it to my home. Um, it's a beast, man. It's all steel construction. Um, love that board. Absolutely love that board. And it sounds amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, you know, the, the RCA BC series of boards, um, you know, from 70s, early to mid-70s, um, there are people that just stand by those things as far as audio quality, um, which is interesting because it is an early transistor board. Um, but what I've read is a lot of the engineering and it went in as, as if it was a tube, because it started out as a tube-based board, but then things evolved and, and they wanted to make it all transistorized. Um, and that probably plays into how good it sounds. But um, really great board. It has a really great history. It survived some floods. Uh, my hometown had a lot of flooding. Um, and it got into my hands, and now it lives in my parents' attic under an old sheet. Um, so <laughs> eventually, eventually I'll get it and bring it up here and restore it properly. Um, there, there are some issues that it's had for at least when it was last in service that... Uh, if anything, it probably gotten worse. So, but yeah, check it out. Uh, it's, it's it's a seven minute video. It's not uh not super big, but it's good. Um, hey Dave, how you doing? Hey um, so um, we got electronic mess and we got Tom in here. Um, Tom probably is, but Jose, if you're not subscribed to uh, Dave's Vintage Apple Tech, uh, check it out. Really, really great guy. Um, he does some streaming too. Unfortunately, it's a really bad time. That's why I really haven't joined. I joined once. Um. But it's just a bad, bad time for me being over on the East Coast and everything. So, so hey, to kind of bring you up to speed on what we're... Oh, and Justin's here. Did did Eric stream Ed end? Is that what it is? Is that why you... <laughs> so as soon as, as soon as I started, right? Um, as soon as I started my screen, my stream, you know, YouTube emails you for some reason. Oh, hey, by the way, you're streaming in case you forget. Um, and I never click on it, but I clicked on it and brought me to YouTube. And I was like, oh no, Eric streaming. I felt so bad. But um, yeah, yeah, it did. I, I, I looked at it a little bit and I saw he was uh, recapping his Mac. Uh, we, him and I were talking about it. He, two or three days ago, whenever the last time I was streaming, he popped in and he told me about it. Um, so that's, that's good. I, I really don't spoil it for me, but I, I'm going to watch that later. Um, so. Good for him. So to bring you guys up to speed, so Justin, that's another guy. If you guys, if you, if the people were here earlier, if you're not subscribed to uh, Justin and Dave, please do. Really, really good YouTubers, really awesome people. Um, make sure that they're they're in your circle and you're following them. Um, really, really like those guys. So to give you guys a bring up to speed on where we're at. Um, if you remember about a year ago, I had a, a video where I did, uh, I built a CRT television from an, a kit from AliExpress. Um, you know, they send you everything, right? You get the whole nine yards. You get the, you get the tube, right? You get the tube, you get the case, you get the board, you get all the parts, and you, you build it yourself, right? It's all, all comes in little itsy bitsy pieces. And uh, in typical AliExpress fashion, they are the cheapest quality parts you can get. Um, so that video, it worked, right? It, it powered up, it would display, but it wouldn't fill the entire screen. Um, so over the past year, uh, in typical Mike fashion, I went way overboard. And instead of troubleshooting and fixing the one they got me, I bought a whole new kit. But this time what I did, instead of using the parts that came with it, if I was able to, I bought newer replacement parts. So like 
I didn't use any of the capacitors. I have all Worth red capacitors. Uh, transistors are new. Uh, most of the resistors are new. Um, some things I couldn't replace, like this IC. Um, so I left it, right? I'm not going to get a flyback, so I'm going to use the flyback that came with it. And, you know, we're going to see, hey, do the parts, does the board work, right? Does the board work in theory, and what is it the parts? Because, um, all right, hey, Jose, thanks for thanks for joining, man, and I'm, and I'm glad you, you got the channel up. Um, so we'll, we'll be talking. We will definitely be talking. Um, I, I, I got a good feeling about you. Um, and in the past year, uh, I've been talking to a lot of that, a lot of my followers who have worked on this kit or just interested in, um, but really two people in general who saw my video, bought the kit, and then have been doing a lot of troubleshooting. So early on in this stream, I had uh, I had the oscilloscope out, and I was doing some probing on this IC to compare with uh, one of my guys on Reddit in Europe who's also troubleshooting it, so it's really nice to be able to, one, know that other people bought this kit and had the exact same issue I did. Um, but now we can take our efforts and kind of bounce them off each other. Um, so that, that's been huge. That's been really great. And, um, you know, when part two of this video comes out, you know, I'm going to profusely thank these guys for, um, one, uh, watching my video and then buying this thing, <laughs> buying this kit from AliExpress, um, but then working with me for the past, you know, almost a whole year to try to tr troubleshoot and get it working. Um, but, you know, from talking, let's see, did he respond? Let me check my phone. No, he didn't. Um, but from talking to him, some, some interesting things happened. Um, he had, there. there's two transistors on here D80 tack wise, um, one of his exploded, right? It just blew up on him. Um, so, you know, he replaced it with a newer transistor and everything works. Um, he noticed that some of the adjustment pots on here, and this is something I picked up on early on, just don't work, <laughs> right? So, um, you know, we're, we're in the process of talking about, well, what's, what parts do we want to source to replace that? Um, early on, uh, I did a test to show I had my, my transistor tester and we measured the transistors that come with the kits and then the ones that I got off of DigiKey, better, you know, much better quality parts. And, um, I'm still not clear because it's a little more, a little more electrical engineering than what I'm good at, but the beta was immensely different between the AliExpress parts and the DigiKey parts. Not a surprise. Uh, and really it just shows that the DigiKey part can regulate power better. Again, not a surprise, but they should be they should be interchangeable. But I think it's one of those things that there are so many parts on the original board with the original parts supplied that are just so under spec that that adds up and it accumulates into a board that just can't process things. Um, a lot of the resistors on here, if you, you know, got rubbing alcohol, you can rub the paint off and then, you know, you don't know what, <laughs> what value, or, or some of the resistors didn't even come with painted bands on it. So the only way to figure out what the value was would be to measure it. The problem with that is and we're going to see this in part two. I, I did film this already, but I had four or five different resistors, all of the same value, or should have been of the same value. And one after another, I would measure them, and they would be way off, like just way off. One of them would be way, way out of spec, but you wouldn't know because you would just look at the bands and you would install it. Um, so that's concerning. Uh, the capacitors that came with it are Chong X, C H O N G X capacitors, pretty notorious for just being crap and failing. Um, but I noticed in the second kit that I bought, some of them didn't have the, the stripe. So, you know, all the capacitors, there's that stripe on the side to show you the, the negative side of it. Um, 
some of them didn't have a stripe. Not that big of a deal, but um, the legs were the same size. So, you, you know, legs always longer. Um, so you didn't know. You wouldn't know. Um, other things I've noticed, especially with the smaller, the smaller capacitors here, um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera, but any reputable band, every any reputable brand of capacitor, they always have that plus sign on the top, right? Even even the small ones, right? There's always the plus sign there, and that what that is, that's a failure point, right? If this capacitor were to fail and explode, it's going to explode from the top and not out from the side. It, it's it's a pressure relief area, right? Because, you know, because that's scorched, when it starts to fail, a little bit of it will pop up and it can just vent off and probably prevent it from catastrophically exploding. That's what good companies do, right? And on these Worth capacitors, every single one of these is, is, is fairly deep. You can get your fingernail in there and, and feel it. It's a very good cut in the top of the capacitor. On the Chong X ones, even on the big ones, right? So even on like the biggest one here, it only has three. Where on Worth, they're all four, right? So whatever, right? We're splitting hairs and, and, and cost cutting. Um, the cuts are not that deep, right? They're almost more just for show. But the concerning thing is on more than half of these, not even just the smallest ones, but more on half of these, there are no score marks, right? So if this capacitor started to fail, or this one, or this one, um, it would catastrophically ex fail and it would explode the whole way out because it doesn't have those relief marks cut into it. Um, but let's be honest, even the ones that do have relief marks cut into it, let me get my bag of goodies here, it's it's so minuscule that it probably wouldn't properly vent off if it needed to. Um, so I'm going to... I'm going to do a deeper dive into some of these Chong X capacitors in the video, and we're going to put them through their paces. So, like, I, I found a lot of documentation where whatever they're rated for, or at least on, on the, the binding, they're not really rated for that. Um, there was a, a gentleman I saw on YouTube, he did a pretty long and thorough video on Chong X capacitors where, you know, if it was rated for... 12 volts or whatever uh, he put 12 through it and you know maybe after like 10 hours or something something ridiculous like it eventually would fail um, or he would go up to 18 slightly over right but still what should be intolerance for, for a standard capacitor and it would fail it would blow up but then he would get a, a Panasonic a worth um, you know any capacitor worth its weight um, put almost twice the amount of voltage through it and it would hold it. The capacitor would do its job. Um, you know, not only would it hold 12 volts like it's rated to, but it would hold 24, sometimes a little bit more. Um, so yeah, all of that compounded just makes me, I don't want to say not comfortable, but I, I lose confidence in the parts that were supplied with this kit. But things that I have learned since that first video came out, this kit likely was never really intended for the general public. Um, it looks like, and you know, so some of the people will remember, you know, especially in North America, ITT Tech, right? So, you know, early on ITT Tech, they would send you parts kits and that's how you would learn. Um, and, and some other, some other institutions did that as well. That seems to be one of the going theories for this kit. Uh, but more likely, it was for individuals in China who were learning about electronics in a academic setting and or, likely and, um, people who would be working in a factory manufacturing these things. Because, you know, the idea is, you know, hey, I give you all the parts, I give you the schematics, go off and assemble it. But we want to do this in a very cheap and cost effective way because at the end of the day i just i just want you to be able to follow the instructions 
and assemble this television. Uh, and it only has to work. And by that, it just has to turn on and not blow up. So if you watch my original video and you saw the screen turned on, it just didn't fill up the whole way. It really looked like it was an under voltage issue. Um, well, that worked, right? It passed. I was able to follow the instructions and assemble it and get a working product. And likely, my theory is it didn't work 100% because of the quality the low quality components in the kit. That's why I'm doing this one with better quality components. We'll see. Uh, um, you know, who knows? It, it might also not work. But uh, it's been a it's been a pretty pretty fun trip. And uh, on the way, because you know, like one does when you're on AliExpress, you find a bunch of other things. Um, I got two of these little guys uh, because it was cheaper to get two of these than one of these. Um, a lot cheaper to get two of these than one of these. So I got two of these little guys. Um, and we'll figure out some project to do with these. I have an idea. Uh, I briefly talked about it uh, earlier, but um, I don't want to, I don't want to jinx myself. So I'm hesitant to, to put that out just yet. But th these are really cool. Adrian from Adrian's Digital, Digital Basement did a nice video on this. They're, they're crisp. Yeah, they, the displays look really good on it. Um, I think his might have been a Sony. I don't know. Um, there were some Sony stock floating around on AliExpress, but this is not. It's just an FT2100. I think it's similar to the Sony uh, model number for these, but no, it's just a, it's just a knockoff. I actually haven't powered this one up yet. I have another one still in bubble wrap. I didn't even open it yet, but um. I got some ideas. Got some good ideas for this one. Um, I'm gonna need when and if it works um, before I finalize the video. I'm gonna need some help from somebody who's really, really good at CAD. Um, so we might be might be seeing some some calls for help with that one coming out. Maybe in the summer. Who knows? We'll see how things go. Um, so yeah, that's kind of that's kind of where we're at. Um, and and before you two came in, I was actually getting ready to to end soon because um, I went through and I only have a couple components left before this board is done. We're gonna put the fly back on here, two transistors. Um, there's four or five resistors and some diodes that I gotta put on. Uh, I'm holding off because some some things I wanna make a point to talk about in the video so i'm going to film those uh and then i just kind of went through and cleaned the bottom of the board i wanted to make sure that before i got it fully populated nothing was grounded or bridged um i found one bad solder joint and maybe you know one or two that could be could be fixed up a little bit but uh overall it looks pretty good i'm pretty happy with uh how this came out so far so hopefully by the end of the week i'll be able to smoke test it and uh you know we'll see if it if it works and uh everything you know <laughs> if this displays fully i'll be able to wrap this video up sooner uh if not then i think we're gonna look at some of these adjustment pots as, as suspect because uh his, his reddit hano is is Jano, and there's a bunch of numbers, but I'm just going to call him Jano. Um, he took these out, and I should have tested it before I put them in. Uh, but he took them out, put it, hooked them up to his meter, and he would adjust the pots. Nothing would change, right? It just wouldn't change. So um, he definitely has a faulty, faulty one on W4. So you know, it doesn't mean that mine's bad, right? It could work. But it's just something you want to keep in mind. So that's that's the next suspected issue. But I think having quality capacitors in here and quality transistors is really going to make a world of a difference as far as how that board handles power. Um, we'll see, though. <laughs> we'll see. Anything can happen. But that being said... I am going to uh, call it a night, um, you know, 11, 17 here on the East Coast. So 
you know, I thank everyone for joining. Uh, if you're not liked and subscribed, please do. And, and go through the chat. If you're not liked and subscribed to uh, Dave, to Tom, but don't use that one. Use Real Chef Tom uh, to Justin to Electronic Mess. He's new, right? Uh, that's my buddy, Jose. Um, like and subscribe to these people. Share your posts. Let's, uh, you know, keep the love going through the community. That's how we get through it. So we're going to wrap up tonight. Thanks for joining. I wish all of you the best. We'll catch you next time.